Welcome to this painting tutorial for how to paint Blood Angels. Uh, this will be on my Space Hulk series. I've been running a special series on the 2009 edition of Space Hulk. And part of that will be painting the miniatures. So inside there you get the Blood Angels Terminators. And uh, I'm going to make that part of that into uh, how to paint Blood Angels. So you'll learn how to paint one of the Terminators from the box game, but you'll be able to apply the same technique to any Blood Angels uh, that you collect and you'll be able to use it the same technique on the vehicles and dreadnoughts as well right that's brother Noctis in the game it's finished and you can see there the detail now that's the kind of level that I'm going to be teaching you today it's quite straightforward there's no quick way to paint blood angels it's quite time consuming but the the visual impact of them if you get them right look really nice and that's the front of the miniature there coming around and then the back as well, the outcome of that's quite nice. People have been asking me how do you paint your Blood Angels, how do you get the smooth finish with the red, how do you paint the gold. I'm going to show you all the techniques today stage by stage. You'll see it's quite a long video but this video will cover every aspect of painting this miniature. You'll be able to, if you follow it carefully and take your time then you'll be able to reach that standard with a steady hand and a bit of patience. Uh, so it's designed really for you to follow through like a step by step uh, just copy me as you go along, press pause on the video and then uh, paint the stage and then press play again and I'll take you on to the next stage. Uh, and then for colour reference I just use the back of the the book that they give you, um, the Space Hulk book. It gives you the layout and the colours for all of the different miniatures on there. So I use that as my guide uh, as to what to paint. There's another example there. That is Sergeant Lorenzo from the game, one of my favourite poses, uh, that miniature came out really well. So follow this one and you'll learn how to paint Blood Angels, the same technique I use for my miniatures, the three stages, base colours, washes and then final highlights, exactly the same for Blood Angels as well. This is the one that I'm going to be painting today, we have shown you how to paint him, uh, it's brother Dino. Right, so painting Brother Dino, just in preparation, you cut the miniature off with a sprue, clean him up with a knife, and uh, just take off all the mould marks. Now, they come in red plastic, which is handy. Uh, so I then, to, this is where you're going to save loads and loads of time, I spray the whole miniature in, I use the Pure Red, Pure Red, which is by Army Painter. I spray the whole, the whole miniature in that, and that gives them a red base coat to work from. And people have been saying, how do you get the smooth red finish? Well, I hardly disturb the red. You'll notice as I paint along that the red's really been done for me. By the primer, I get that nice smooth finish. And then really it's just down to uh, using the washes and the final highlights. And then you'll get that red smooth finish. Because a lot of the Games Workshop paints, the oranges, the reds, yellows, they're not very high pigment. And it's hard to build up lots of layers of them. And if you do that, you end up making the paint look very blobby. So to avoid that, I just spray straight on with red. And that gives me my base colour. Right then, just to run through the paints that you'll need, there's quite a few uh, for this Blood Angels Terminator. And then starting at the top left uh, is the Skull White to start off with. Uh, that's now called White Scar. I've actually got the chart in front of me here, so it's gonna. I've got the old and the new names for the paints, so you won't have to look them up. So Skull White at the top left, which is White Scar, and then the new one, Abaddon Black, which is the old Chaos Black. And then the old colour I've got there, which is Blood Red, and the new colour for that is Evil Sun's Scarlet. Then Blazing Orange, uh, the new colour is Troll Slayer Orange, and then Codex Grey, which is now called Dawnstone, and then Ultramarine's Blue, which is now Outdoor Guard Blue, then Sunburst Yellow, and that's now Flash Gits Yellow. And on the second row there, you've got Snot Green, it's the old colour, and Snot Green is now Warpstone Glow, and Moot Green, that's the new colour, it's formerly Scorpion Green, and then the red there, the new colour for that is Waz Dacker Red, Waz Dacker Red, and that was formerly Red Gore. Then you've got the old Bleached Bone, the old Bleached Bone is called 
a Shabti Bone, then uh, Bestial Brown, which is now Mournfang Brown, and then for Metallics, you've got Bolt Gun Metal, that's the old colour, that's now a Lead Belcher, and then we've got Chain Mail, which is now Iron Breaker, and then Mithril Silver, which is now Rune Fang Steel. Then for gold, I use Shining Gold, it's the old colour. Uh, Shining Gold is now uh, Gehenna's Gold. And then Hashak Copper, that's the new colour. And Hashak Copper used to be the Dwarf Bronze. Right, then for washes, uh, there's the Seraphim Serpia, that's the new colour, it was the old Griffone Serpia. And then I also use Devlin Mud, that's the old colour. Devlin Mud is now Agrax Earth Shade. And finally, the old Badab Black, which is now called Nuln Oil. So that is the colours that you'll need for the Blood Angels Terminator. Right, first colour I do is the gold. Now I've got uh, Vermin Brown here. Point is with the gold, again, the metallics, especially the golds, not too good a pigment on those. And when you apply, you'll find if you apply the gold directly to this red, you'll see the red through it, and you have to build up about three or four layers to make it solid. I don't want the red showing through on the miniature when I paint the gold. So, what I've found, what you can do, is just give any areas that are going to be gold on the miniature, give them a coat of a mid brown colour, like this vermin brown. So say on the bottom of the foot here, this uh, crest coming up from this skull will be gold. So I'm just going to run over it in brown. And that will change it from red to brown. And that will give me a good background for the gold. Again, just running around. Not too hard, only a, not too much work involved, so it's worth doing. And it will save you having to build up loads and loads of layers of of the gold colour. So there's gold here on his chest as well. I'm just using the uh, the back of the rule book here just to check my colours. Um, that's about it for gold really, not too much else. No, it seems fine. And just on the back of the miniature here, there's some gold on the back here. Now you don't get a picture of the back so I have had to guess what's what. Usually it's just common sense. This bit would be gold. Uh, imagine these three skulls would be gold. So they all get a colour. They all get a coat of this brown. Again, being neat, you don't want to make a mess. But not too big a deal with this brown. It's similar to the red in the colour. But it will make a difference. I want to run the brown in the eye sockets. Because I don't want red looking eye sockets there and then that's going to be brown as well or it'll be gold eventually so I'm just around the gold around there and around there right next stage is easy just take the I've got hashrack copper here and I use that just for the bullets on the inside of the ma uh, magazine there on the gun just both sides, just get that filled in, make sure that goes in. Try to get metallics done first because they'll take a bit longer to dry. Right, next stage is the shining gold. Um, you're going to have a couple of layers of this, you want to get this one on early. So wherever you've painted the brown, wherever you want gold to be eventually, then you just put a layer of that on over the brown and you'll see that you'll have a the first layer will be a brownie gold as opposed to a red gold that you would have if you hadn't have used the brown and you'd end up having to build up the layers I mean that one coat here actually is good enough but I uh, will do a second coat just to get it right so wherever the gold is or wherever the brown is and just on his leg here now you don't want to get paint on 
the red. You don't, you don't want to make a, like a glaring mistake across any areas that are going to be red because you're not really going to disturb that red undercoat. So immediately, the moment you make a mistake, you get some paint on there, get the mistake off quickly, walk down a brush and get it off because um, you want to keep that red pure. Alright, next stage uh, is the bolt gun metal. So I'll apply this layer anywhere where the metal's going to be. See that I've got a mistake now. I've gone over onto the red. So wash out my brush while it's wet and then just run it along. Keep washing it out and run it along. And that mistake is removed. So I'm just running along the chain here. Now some people say, how do you get a steady hand when you're painting? So, I try and hold the miniature from as many points as possible. Look at my fingers, if I'm holding the base, finger there, finger there and finger there. So I've got a good grip on the miniature, I'm not trying to hold him with two fingers. It's holding him from multiple angles, that steadies the miniature. And then my hand is resting on the table. The finger's braced on the table, so it's that miniature's not moving. And then my other hand, I've got a good grip on the brush, and then I rest my arm on the table as well. And then sometimes I'll rest my wrist and the under part of my hand on the table as well, so really it's just my fingers that are moving around. That will help keep your hand steady as you work, and then just in time as well you get practice at having a steady hand and then as you get steadier then you can paint quicker also it's very hard to paint detail when your paint is thick, so always keep your paints watered down and fine, and that will help you greatly as well so just that uh, gunmetal on the chain there and then I'm just going to put gunmetal over the rest of the Miniature. Right, so the bolt gun metal is done. Uh, just on the chains here, just on uh, this part of the helmet, just in there, just on the sides of the head and the earpieces. Uh, just filled in this whole area, front and back, with the metal as well. Lots of work on the gun. It takes a little while this one. Uh, just on these uh, bits that connect to the gun, uh, there and there, just inside. Just inside this bit and in the grills here. Uh, just one other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video. I have drilled out the holes on the storm bolter there. I've drilled them through two and then I make sure they connect through to the holes that are already on the side so you can see through. It looks pretty, it looks a lot better when you've done that. Right, next is the grey. Uh, it'll be the old Codex grey or the new one here is uh, Dawnstone. So just anywhere where there's grey on the miniature, which would be this one. Now, it's a red shoulder pad, so I've got to be neat. I want to be neat with this grey. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going around the edge carefully, making sure it's looking good. Though I'm just paint over the surface, I do have to get around the sides, otherwise, you're going to have red edges to it, and that won't look very good. And then I want to make sure I fill in all these areas here. One coat should be enough, just working it into all the shaded areas. That looks good. And then around on top here. Just working neatly at a good pace. And then anywhere else where there's grey on the miniature, on this one I don't think there's anywhere other than that pad. So that's done. Right, next colour is a scab red. Now you've got the main red, but if you look at the purity seals, uh, the crests of them, they're kind of different reds. So at this stage, before I um, do the shading, I want to pick out that red, make it look different. So wherever there's a purity seal, it just gets another coat of that. It just gets a coat of scab red, wherever a purity seal is, just the crest of it on the miniature. Right, for gems on this one, this particular miniature, it looks like a kind of very, very dark blue. I'm going to 
uh, not copy the book exactly. You are free to adjust how you want. I like purple for gems on Blood Angel. It looks really nice. So you want to take the colour I've got here is Lich Purple um, or whatever the new colour is. It's that nice deep colour. You want to paint just the whole gem in that colour. So wherever there's a gem, a couple down here next to the leg. So they'll get a coat. And you want to paint neatly and it's the sides and the bottom. You've got to work the paint all the way around. It won't look right if you miss bits. So really, base colour is not taking too long. Because the majority of the colour is the red. And the red's being done for you. Right, just a general painting tip. You always want to try and keep your brush uh, damp. Not soaking wet, but damp. So that the bristles are damp all the way along. And you want your paint really about halfway up. Halfway up the brush, not much further. There's a good flow there. And then keeping your paints watered down helps as well. And then to make your brush last longer, uh, you just wash out the brush very thoroughly. Then what I do is I roll it on the tissue, rotating it around, getting the bristles moving, because paint will build up in the very inside of the brush there. And if that starts to dry, then that will destroy the bristles on your brush. So real good thorough wash out a couple of times. And then I just roll the brush around like this and that takes out all the pigment and it keeps those bristles clean all the way through to the neck of the brush there and if you do that there's no reason why a brush won't last you a good two or three years and keep it in good condition and then just a bit of spit on the brush and put it in my mouth and that keeps the bristles together do that when you finish painting just lick it pull it out and keep a sharp tip then that will dry and it keeps the bristles in a good shape as well so a couple of tips there for uh, looking after your brushes and getting the best out of them. My right, next one is like a half metallic. I want a dark metallic colour uh, to go on the joints and the armour, on the elbows and behind the legs, and a couple other spots. So I take bolt gun metal and then simply just mix it with Chaos Black or Abaddon Black. And you want a dark metallic here yeah, that looks like very dark metal I'm going to keep adding the black here until I get the colour I want I just want some metallic showing through that looks good enough alter it down keep it a nice flowing colour and then on the miniature it's still too metallic that one more black I'm going to add here because it's meant to be black as such but I add metal to it I think it looks a bit better. That's it, it flows in there. Yeah, it's visible in this crease, so I'm just again keeping a good sharp brush. Hold oh, so far it's all using the detail brush. And the reason why you can't use that brush throughout just keeping it in good condition and in good shape. And it, it holds a nice lot of paint as well, as opposed to the fine detail. I'm just carefully filling that in, and that looks fine. As long as if the hand is open on the, on the Blood Angel, you'll see the ribbing there as well, so shade that in. That's not in this case though. Um, so, that looks alright. Now, you don't have to do this, but I have started to take a little bit of watered down black and fill in behind the head in this void here because that's near it needs to be shaded and I just add a bit of black in there just to help strengthen that shading and just run it behind watery it doesn't have to be solid black but that is meant to be a strong shade and if you get any on the helmet the buff here by accident just watered down brush or take away any mistakes and that just shades behind there because it's awkward to shade with the washes and you want it quite strong if you look at the pictures at the back of the book the other spot for this metallic is the little grills at the back of the feet little squares so I'm just filling those in and then we'll move on to the next colour 
Now you can use uh, the old bleach bone. Commando khaki is good. I'll use that. Now that is on all the cloth and bone. There'll be a couple of layers required for this one. Now you want to fill it in. It's not just painting the tops, it's all the way around and behind, underneath. You've got to catch everywhere. This skull here is in bone. So, top side, around, and underneath. It will really stand out if you don't get all the angles. So I try and paint it all the way around. Right, I've done the colours there. Uh, the Commando Khaki. It's dried and then really you're going to need a second coat. I would advise that you do. So I'm just going to run that over the miniature. Now it should be a bit quicker because the shading around the edges will be alright. It's just on the more solid colours. Then you want to get that Commando Khaki on there. Nice, looks fine. It's quite a lot. And you'll see after this colour that you're really beginning to look apart now. So you're just running it around. Base colours you're covering all the areas. See I've done all this cloak here that needs to run up. Next colour is snot green. Uh, or whatever the new colour is and you're just looking to fill in the eyes so careful job on this one make sure you fill it right in there and there that's great that's that done it brings the eyes to life that's just your base colour for the eyes there it's not really any other part of the miniature that has it now I've seen uh, blue, take some ultramarines blue and that's just for some crystals here in this scanner thing he's got on his shoulder. Just fill that in and fill the other one in. And anywhere else there's a, uh, it's up to you how you do the crystals, what colour you do, you can do any colours that you want. You can copy the ones on the book exactly as you see them or you can use uh, your own colours, it's entirely up to you. So that's that done. Right now really the last colour before shading is the black. I've got bad on black here. Uh, there's quite a few areas, this power fist just behind here um, according to the picture is black so just fill that in. And again on this uh, bad on black the, the uh, density of the paint, the pigment isn't that great, so it may require a couple of cars. That's that, and then it looks like the fingers on oh, him yeah. up to there stops at that point. So just fill the fingers in. Again, making sure that all the cracks are covered because it will stand out or be glary if you've missed areas. Just painting around here, yeah, looks alright. Now, for the wires coming out, I'm just going to do them black. You'll notice that on some of the pictures, they're patterns or different colours. You can do what you want. You can find yourself spending loads of time trying to get them right if you're going to paint them all stripy and with patterns, and you can end up spending a lot of time on such a small part of the miniature. But if you want that finishing touch, it can look really good, but it will require a lot of work for you to get it right. So, like me, if you want to just get them done to a good standard, but not spend ages and ages on them then I just paint these black and they look fine in black there's no problem in which case there's uh, a cable running off you'll see on the showcase video that some of them uh, ones that are meant to have stripy patterns 
have just been painted over. I'd been working on them and then just gave up because they were taking up so much time. So, but for those of you who want to do a real masterclass, job on them and then paint their colours, paint their patterns. Making sure I get all of the pipe around front and back again. Just going to paint the base. Now you're painting the black around. I would put, just paint the top part of the base first. And carefully up to the rim. You don't want to fall short, you don't want to go over, you just want to meet it just in the crease there. That's fine. Now, depending on the base, some bases have raised areas that look like torn up metal. This one has, so I'm going to pick that out. I'm just going to do the black roughly first. And then we'll get that metal part done. Bolt gun metal. Just around the edge here. And that's another area that you can paint. Mix the bolt gun metal with some black and paint if the underside of the foot is exposed then the sole of the foot then paint that there I wouldn't leave it solid red it doesn't look right I'll just give that a coat I'm painting it whilst the black's still wet looking to sort of blend it into the black where it meets the black floor I'll wash the brush out Blend that in. So I've blended in. I've blended in the bolt gun metal, and then when that's done, I'm just going to run black uh, around the edge here. Run it through. underneath now there'll be another layer of black to come later so even you see it's not completely solid black it's all right you'll still be able to get that finished solid later so you'll see that in a minute just done all the base colors are finished the grays on there you see the metallics the base is done and shaded and blended in with the metallic and uh, just to represent that uh, creased up metal that he's standing on and it's just done all the way around so really once that those base colors are done uh, you're looking to move on to the second stage and that's washes be multiple washes on this one and that will do all the shading for you and then the final stage is the highlight right now for washes I'm going to use two at the same time because they're not really going to interrupt each other. You're going to use Nuln Oil, which is the old Bad Ab Black, and I'm still on the old Griffone Serpia here. Uh, but it's those two colours that we're going to use now. Um, and you'll see that as I paint, it they won't cross over into each other. It's going to be one shade or the other. So, first one, the Nuln Oil, I want to use on the purely metallic areas. So that is really going to be uh, the bolt gun here, or the uh, storm bolter. That I just want to deepen the metal on that one, so I'll run the black onto there. If I run the serpia into it, it'll make the gun look rusty. I don't want the gun to look rusty because it's in service, it's being used by this guy. So we'll drop the Griffon serpia shade and instead use the Nuln Oil to do the shading on this one. So around there, on the trigger, 
and just rotate around. And just on the scope there. How easy these shades flow in. Easily done. You just use a again I'm using a detail brush here. I'm using that brush because I still want to be quite neat with it. I don't want to make a mess. I'm just make sure, using the point of the brush to make sure it runs into the shaded areas that I want. You don't want to flood it, but you don't want to thin lay. You want to get it just right. Just working it into the insides of the barrels there. And then behind the gun. Now another spot you can use the shade is on uh, these parts here. These cords that run from the arm to the gun. I just want those to be filled in. Another spot you can go is inside this bit, this little vent at the back and also in this grill. And I fill that right in, even letting the shade go on the on all the edges as well. The shades really key the miniature together, as you'll see. So that's that. That looks good. And you'll see the gun now is shaded really well. So whilst that's drying, there's no harm in using the Griffone Serpia. It's the first shade. It's not too noticeable, but it is very important to use. Um, so we want to run that over pretty much everything else. I run it over the red, it goes in all the eye sockets, it goes on these metallic parts. And when it dries it doesn't look too noticeable but it has done its work, It's that brown will help the shading. I'm just running behind the head there, just running in the hole. Taking your time to make sure you get every part covered. On the chest there, the chains. the gold, every part, purity seals. Now look, there's a whole panel, there's no point in me coating that, I'm just going to cover those little rivets that are sticking out and that'll do, and then I'll get the top side, front, back, underneath covered. And then all the this, uh, loincloth here, all covered. There, around the knee pad, but not, I'm not going to cover the whole knee pad, no point. I'm going to keep that red. The less of that I cover the better, but any cracks just around the feet here as well. We'll get the covering. Purity seal. Fill all the shade in nice. Just around the crack of the thing. Arm. Purity seal filled in underneath, shading underneath the shoulder pad there. And there. The gems, just his fingers around the front and back. Down. Looking good. Looking good. Just making sure I catch. All these parts, shoulder pad. And then uh, avoiding the gun, not going to cover the gun. Just saves you a bit of time, sort of having to wait for each one to dry. These two can be done side by side. Again, not too much on this back panel, just those little bits there. And this square with these three skulls can be filled in. Just round deep there in the shoulder pad. Lovely. If you get it on an area, just take your finger and take it off. Now I'm shading around this fist. And see how important it is that you've got you've worked the colours right round. Because the shading's not gonna 
solved that problem if you haven't it's going to you're going to see red and then once the shading's in there and you've missed it and it's going to be quite a lot of work for you to get that sorted out again you'll have to re-go over the color and then and put the shading back on top again so it's best just to make sure you get that right at the base coat stage and I'm just keeping the camera rolling here just showing you how fast this technique is underneath filling in those bits there leg leg just filling in filling in back of the purity seal underneath the foot down at this gold thing underneath there and then just under the armpit and around this guy is almost shaded now then the metallic on the floor needs this colour a rusty colour that's an important one to get on that so on that goes well, fact, you'll find that the black paint will rub off as you touch the base so the last thing I do is give that black a coat of this brown because these washes are actually good for protecting the paint from wearing off they do form a good layer so I'm going to coat the whole miniature in that as well and that will help prevent further wear off I mean I'll touch it up again later but that just helps key it all in so that's that shade done two shades null oil and the serpia for all the red and that will start to shade down the red for you and as I mentioned important leave leave the panelled areas clear in pure red there's no need to run the wash over those just run it into the cracks and that will save you work later so that pure red still there untouched on the key areas everywhere else is shaded and you've used it to shade virtually the whole miniature very fast way and you'll see that he's not looking too bad already we had another shade that'll add more depth to the miniature and then the highlights will bring out that finished effect right next stage is the second wash <clears throat> so you've done the black on the gun and you've done the serpia on the rest of the figure and then over the whole figure including the gun it's the old Devlin mud which is now Agrax earth shade it's like a dark brown not black uh, but like a deep brown perfect color again I'm going to use a base coat brush with a nice point because I still want to direct the, the uh, ink as it goes on the wash and I'm looking to apply it to the miniature working into all the colors into all the corners now these little grill bits here on the top of the helmet I want to get the the wash into there and then top of the helmet I want to fill in oh this is the one you use to fill in holes the eye sockets got to be covered not flooded to an extreme but you're going to make sure that, that is filled in so that looks good and all around this mouth part here make sure that's all shaded in along there all the chains it ties the whole miniature together and it does all the shading for you just around his belt there and then on this purity silk up inside the arm working it inside here as well I'm going to try and flood that a bit because I really want that deep to go in there that's good uh, all inside here and as I said <clears throat> it does all of the hard work for you all the shading any solid panels of red I don't want to interrupt them and I will leave because you only have to try and repair that wash later on so I try and leave the solid red areas try and flood a little bit on these holes there on the um, studs on the armor and all over all the hand and then all the gun this will catch anywhere that the black has missed and give it not a totally solid black partly brown a little bit so it's the gun is used and has been on campaign so no, I'll shade it just nice I'll just run the wash over the hand 
pretty fast technique. Again, these studs here, I'm just going to flood those, not the panel. Don't let it go on all the panel, because I only have to paint over that again, but on these studs it can flood later on. I want them to be picked out, and I'm going around the kneecap, but I don't want to pick out the knee. I don't want to cover the knee up in the shade, keep it as red as possible. Down here in all the cracks, lovely, and then all his robe done. It just keys the whole thing in for you. It seals all of the colours together, and you can see that this shade in particular makes quite a difference on the miniature. It really starts to bring in uh, the tones there. So, just gonna fill in those areas, looking good. And then this grill, get all that filled in. Just working that one, I make sure I get all the holes covered. Just take it off of the red there. Try not to let the red get too deep. The more you cover the red, the more repair you'll have to do when you come to final highlight. So I try and keep the shade from making puddles on the main red panelling. Just use a finger to take that away. Around the design. It picks out the design, all the gold now, the detail on the gold's been picked out, which is handy. And then I want to make sure I get underneath the shoulder pads or along there on the wrist. So really, that's about it. And then I want to cover the rusty flooring. So again, now you want to leave the miniature, or if you're doing a batch, move on to the next one. Let that shade dry out. The details in, and then all the shading and all the details done as well. So that's a big chunk of the miniature. And what's left now is the, the highlighting stage. There's a lot of work to do on the red. You'll see the stages that we do on that. And then uh, really it's the red and the uh, the creams, the cloths, and the purity seals that need to be picked out. That's where the time's taken up. Um, but other than that, not too bad going. Shoot. I suppose you're already halfway through the miniature. It's good. Um, you could leave it at that stage. I mean, that's gaming standard. It's no problem. But in the third stage, I'm going to take you on to the final highlights to bring it up to the same level as these other ones. You can see the final details on this guy. Uh, look really nice on there. And you see the depth of the the red, and you can see the depth of the red. I'll we'll show you how all that's done on the gold as well. So I'm gonna move on now to final highlights for this Blood Angels Terminator. Right, welcome back. Next stage. We've done our base colours and we have done the washes. And now we're looking to get the figure to this final stage. This is the stage where we're going to have to take the most time. Uh, it's the details, but this is really where the figure is going to be enhanced and finished off and looking nice. So that's an example of the sergeant there, Sergeant Lorenzo. Our figure that we're painting is at this stage here. You can see it's looking alright, quite dull looking. Um, but the base colours are in, the shading's finished, and then what we're going to do is lift these colours out, and you can see the difference once it's done. There's quite a difference between the two. So, I'm going to take you through those stages now, and then you'll have the finished figure. So the next stage I always paint next is the red. So we're going to go for the red here, the red I'm going to be using is I've got a new part here of Evil Sun Scarlet, which is the old blood red. And for paints, people ask me what paint is what. You know, there's new Games Workshop paints that have come out. Just simply uh, go on Google, type in uh, Citadel Paints Conversion, and then on the images, you know, all the charts will come up, and you'll be able to check out what colours are what and buy the right ones from the old range so, uh, or from the new range, depending on what paints you've already got. So. I take this colour here and you're looking really it's just repairing, you're painting over the red and hopefully you haven't disturbed the red too much with the washes, you haven't got it too much everywhere 
So it's just a simple coat of the red over the figure. You see on the knee pad there, and I'm just running it around. Simple as that. And then all the panelling gets a coat. Careful not to fill in the shading. And then just gently around, leaving the shading around these studs here, and then just to the bottom of the figure as well, just on the leg. And this is where you need to be neat. It's worth being neat at this stage. Keep your paint thinned down with water. If the paint's too thick, it'll blob and then bung up the brush and then you'll start making mistakes. So this paint's fresh out of the pot, so it's flowing quite nice. But if it does start to thicken up, then just add a few drops of water. So you can see on the leg there, the red's been enhanced just by repainting uh, the base colour there, blood red. Just working on the foot there, over the top, and that's basically it. Probably this layer, this stage, is the most time consuming part, because you want to be neat, you want a nice clean finish, so take your time, don't rush it, but look, you can see on the leg there, that that has picked out the detail and all the shading's done if it's a bit ghosty you still see some shading coming through just do a second coat but if you keep your paint thin and nice then it won't it won't uh, you'll have a nice smooth finish to the paint you won't have that blobby effect so you're just painting repainting over the top and you go over the whole figure and then that's the red half done so you can see the red's finished now go all the way around just use a detail brush because you can get a nice lot of paint on it but still keep a really nice tip so detail brush will do it's the red and really just that coat has lifted the figure i didn't think it would make much difference but it has just really gone over all the detail there so that's the red almost completely finished what we're going to do next is just the highlight of the edges. Now, with red, you don't want the figure to end up looking orange. So our highlight's going to be quite small, not very much amount, to keep the figure looking red and yet still pick out the details. So you're just going to use uh, the old blazing orange, I think it was called here, it's called Troll Slayer Orange. Use that. Again, the paint has to be thin. You may even want to mix it. Have a little bit of water. I've been taking a little mixing palette. I use old CDs. Handy enough. Now you can use the detail brush. You can do if the tips. You can use detail brush if the tips good enough, or you might want to switch to a fine detail brush. So whichever brush you prefer. This paint's nice and thin. And then what you're looking to do is just pick out the detail. So I run it along the edge like that. Sometimes you can use the brush sideways if it's a sharp edge and it just picks out the detail for you. And just that orange will do that picks out the detail. And this coat will really lift the armour on the figure but don't let the orange get too thick and too strong watery is better because it will flow nicely and you'll get finer lines and it will, f it will just generally flow better see I've got a nice sharp line on the top of the kneecap there and then just under I won't paint the underside because it's a highlight but I'll paint the top ridge of the shin guard plate that part of the armour see that running around the edge there that picks that out really nice so again 
There's no quick solution to this one. This is where a steady hand, a nice tip to the brush, a nice thin down paint. Now I keep washing the brush out. I don't want it getting clogged up with dry paint. As I said, you keep your paint fine. Just add in a few drops of water to maintain it because it will gradually dry out over time. And I'll just run it around there. It's giving me a nice edge. This highlight's coming out quite nice. There we are, looking good. And then around the tip of the feet there. Nice orange edge. And that is good going. Now I could paint up a little bit across the top of the foot. I'm just going to sweep the brush over very gently. Keep it watery. And that just lifts that foot off in the highlight a little bit better. You will see. Again, just keeping the brush washed out. You can use it, put it in the brush in your mouth, pull it out to keep a nice fine tip to it. It's always wet paint, steady hand, and a good tip on a brush. And you'll be able to highlight no problem. So that's coming out quite well, and you can see the difference on the leg there. It really lifts the red out, and it still looks red, it doesn't look orange, but it's highlighted enough to make it really stand. Nice crisp effect to it. So I'm going to run over the rest of the miniature here. So, there's the figure, the orange highlight done. And you can see what effect that's had on the armour. It's really lifted out the detail there. So just run all the way around the figure. That's probably the, the most time consuming part of uh, this paint scheme. But probably the most effective when you really pick out that Terminator armour. It looks crisp and clean. And the orange isn't too strong. So you've still got that red miniature. But with the right strength highlight to it. So that's that colour done. Uh, once you reach that stage in painting the Terminator or any Blood Angels then you're really you're well on the way to finishing the figure off. It's just finishing parts now to do. And uh, each stage that we do from now on will enhance the figure even more till you bring them out to that kind of that kind of stage where all the details picked out really nice. And I'm going to show you all these stages here and then you'll see how we transform the figure from this basic level to the finished article. Right, we move on to the next stage now. Before we move on, I'll mention flesh to you because there's no flesh to paint on this figure. So, just to cover it, you can see the skin on Sergeant Lorenzo here. The base colour you'd use for that is the old dwarf flesh. You cover that over and then shade that with the sepia shade, let it dry and then shade it again with the old Devlin mud, that dark brown shade which is now Agrax Earth shade. Let all that dry. Then simply repaint the flesh over the top leaving the details, the shading uh, in the dark shade. So you run over across the whole figure there. Then for the final highlight uh, you take the old bleach bone Water it down quite a bit on a palette, nice and watery, and then just pick out the highlighted areas. It's the cheekbones, around the mouth, the nose, especially along the top of the forehead. I let it dry, uh, and then do it again if it's too thin, just on the extreme highlights, and that'll pick out the flesh, and you get that nice flesh effect. So that's how to do that. Now on the figure, it's up to you. What uh, colours you do first. The black does wear off the figure. It goes down to the original red <clears throat> if you touch it too much. So I would do, usually I'll do black last. So I keep black as the last colour. So a good colour to do next usually is the gold. So we've got shining gold. And then I lift the colour, make it lighter with mithril silver. So those two colours and the palette take some of the gold mix it up with the silver the silver is quite strong so it will lighten the gold quite quickly looking for a silvery gold and then just wherever the gold is just 
just go over the top of it with this silver here. Now, you see that? Picks out the gold there just nice. And then not too much paint on the brush, not too dry. I usually just run the brush over details like this crest here. It just highlights the top of it. That's fine, and that just picks out the gold. A bit weak, this one. So I'm going to add a bit more silver to it. I really want this highlight to stand out nicely. So a little bit more silver. Just pick out the reef effect, and that's come out nice. And then there's a crest here on the chest. I just run the brush over the top of that because the detail sticks out nice and high. And that chest part sticks out great. And round right, there's quite a crest here on the shoulder. So I'm going to sun paint again, not too much because you don't want to go in the detail. You don't want to flood the detail. You just want to skim along the surface. And that lifts that colour. Just nice to see it makes quite a difference. We could paint each individual thing, but I just skim over the top it's quicker and just as effective. And that crest looks good. The skull, just run the brush, skim the brush over the top. Easy, done. And the three skulls along the shoulder, uh, the back here. I'll skim the brush over the top there and then over the top just picking out making sure the brush flicks across the teeth the eye sockets, nose sockets and that looks great I've got another crest, my paint's starting to dry now so it's a bit more gold a bit more silver I guess the ratio is about one third silver something like that but you adjust it depending on what you want and I'm not careful not to look too much of the brush and then I just run the gold over the crest here not flooding it too much that looks good and then just on there as well I'll go add a bit more silver Buckle here on the back. Looking good. Okay. So that gold effect has come out well. Psychorax bronze, it's called now. Used to be the old dwarf bronze. I use this different shade for the ammunition. But it's the final highlight, so I bring out the bronze. And again, I add mithril silver to it to lift it. There's a final highlight. And it's just really the bullets inside the magazine here. You can just see the bullets there. They need to be highlighted. And just using the tip of the brush with enough wet paint on it, I just gently move it across. It's the chain mail that we will use on the bolt gun and any chains and things. So again, just doing all this all in the detail brush. See his face mask there. It's all shaded in, so I'm just gonna put some on the tips there. And then, that part around the mouth. I'll just paint the edges of it as well. And then, the bottom, and then when the paint's fine enough, I'm just going to run over the top of that grill, and that's, let's pull that out nicely. Then there's a bit here just at the top of the head, and then there's the rims of his targeting thing here. So I'm just picking out the edges of them. That looks good. So you've got uh, chains here. That detail needs to be picked out. So again, just a brush with not too much paint on it. And I'll just pick out the detail by running it over the top. Anything that's sculpted deep 
It's only a case of running the brush over the top and the detail comes out nice. I'm just running a brush along here, really. I'm not too fussed about picking out every link. You want to just highlight along the top. And if you miss a few of the ones that are further back, it adds depth to the figure anyway. But that's coming out well. Just at the side of the head here, there's a bolt, so we'll pick that out. Done. One on the other side, no. So, there and then under the arm here, I'm just running a brush over the top of a few of them. That looks good. And then here as well. Alright, then on the back of the miniature, there's a couple of spots there, and then this grill. I mean, it's just a case of just running the brush over the top and you're just picking out the very tips the very top ridge of that grill will be enough, it's all shaded for you already so you just want to bring an extreme highlight on the grill there and that's about it, that looks good and then you can see on the arm and just if you have the consistency right on your brush you can just run down a lot quicker than painting each individual one that's come up fine let's do the same on the other arm so you've all the shading done for you just really bringing a final highlight to the figure just to give you that shape and really what's left to is the, the uh, storm bolter so I just pick out the Highlights here. Now, <clears throat> see this panel here? All I'm going to paint is the edges of it. So up and then down, and then just leave the rest shaded, and that's a nice effect. Remember, I drilled these out so I can just run the brush over the top of that. Go over the top of that. Another thing not to forget, I'm using a detail brush or a finer brush is these bolts, these studs here on the miniature. With the studs, you just want to touch the top of them. And that's it, not really disturb them. So just a little spot on top will be enough to pick those out because the shading's already done around them. Just picking out the obvious highlights and then leaving the rest shaded, it add, adds depth to your figure it gives a real nice um, worn campaign effect to the weapons makes it look like they've, these storm bolters are quite old for these seasoned soldiers I've, got, I've pulled out some, put a bit of white on my palette there so you take some of the scab red and some white with it and you want it to make like a whitened version of it and it's this different shade of red that you'll use a little bit more white as a final highlight for these purity seals you see one here on the right hand side and all I do is just pick out the rim of it and I'd sort of dab I don't want to make a perfect circle because it's kind of a waxy seal it's meant to be so I just do enough to pick that out, there's one there there's one just there there's one just tucked in on the inside leg there's quite a few on this particular model one up here on the shoulder and just picks these out so you paint the circle and then on the edges that are seen just paint, make sure you paint there as well alright people ask how do you paint gems so I'm going to show you one of the larger ones on here we're going to paint this purple gem so remember our, our base colour was the lich purple painted over the red and then that's been so what I want to do is take the old Lich Purple and just repaint it. Now you want to paint 
all of it in the purple just to strengthen the colour apart from the top left corner leave that dark this top left corner just leave that dark that's your first stage now this can be applied to circular ones as well but we'll just do this teardrop shape then you want to take lich purple on your palette and simply mix it with some white so you've got a lighter version and you just want to paint you just want to paint the right hand bottom right hand corner like that so it looks something like that and then add if you want to be really fussy and really go for detail take what you've mixed and add even more white to it and just tuck a bit right in the corner extreme corner small amount around like that that really lifts it out and then the final touch a nice sharp tip to your brush a short dip into white so that just the tip of your brush has got a bit of white on and you put a spot in the top left hand corner nice round spot in the top left hand corner and there's your gem really nice effect on the figure once you know how to do them then you can get great effects and it's not too much effort to do that just knowing the way of doing it and that, that was really effective I've got three to paint here and there's different colours to paint around the miniatures a couple on the leg so I'm going to paint all those and then get that stage completed on the figures up, it's an effective stage if you paint gems really nice it really really makes your figure stand out look at the difference look between this really dark one here and then with your light highlighting and shade, highlighting and your dot there it lifts the whole thing up and adds a nice dimension to your figure Right, so you see I've done the gems, you see them on the shoulders there, and I've done them just on the back, shoulder pad here, around the crest, here, just on the inside arm, so there they are, they're looking just on the leg there as well, looking really nice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do another one, and we're going to, just to show you you can do it for any colour, and any shape, I'm going to swap the colour to blue, so ultramarine's blue, and the gem I want to paint is just the sight here on this targeting thing. So I'm repainting the blue in all of the figure apart from the top left hand side. Like that, so the blue's in there apart from the top left hand part. I want that dark, so that really enhances the white dot when you put it on. And then I take some of the blue and I mix it with a little bit of white to get a lighter shade because this gem is so small I'm just going to do one shade in the corner here so it's a lighter blue and I want to paint the the bottom right hand corner in kind of a crescent shape so I just roll the brush around you can see it there I'm going to add a bit more white to it because it's only going to be one coat so I'm going to make this one stand out, that's a bit better. So add that in again. That's nice and clear, that looks good. So then you've got the highlight on the right hand, bottom right hand side, and then in the top I want to insert a dot of white. I'll keep it on the tip of a brush, steady myself, and in, and then it's done, it's in there. I'm going to try and put a tiny one on there as well so you can see that sight is done there and that looks good and that's blue just simply taking the original blue colour adding some white to it you can do that for red for red I wouldn't add white I would use yellow for that highlight uh, the same for green and uh, depending on the type of green you want to do if you want to do a limey green then you add yellow for your highlight if you want to do more of a stark kind of green then add white or a mixture of the two but it applies to any colour uh, just that same technique for painting all of your gems and uh, that's one of the parts to this that really enhances the figure right next stage we wanted to paint the eye so you go back to your original color the old snot green we used so you want the green you want the green to shade it all the dots gonna go on the on the outside 
of the figure. So you'll see it there. The dots on the right, top outside corner. So we're looking to shade the inside of the eye, <coughs> the inside part. So it's green just to fill that out. Just your original base colour. I'm using the old snot green here. I just simply tuck the brush in the corner of the eye and run it out and then ignore the outside corner because we're going to put our dot. And then I take the lime green, the old scorpion green, keeping it fine this one, don't want a thick blob going in. Nice tip to the brush and I just run it in the corner. There. Not quite neat how I wanted it. Take a bit of water to it and remove any mistake. And again, top corner, drag it out across the eye there. Bit thin, so no harm in a repeat coat just to enhance the colour. That's good. So the inside of the eye has received the highlight here on both sides. And then all we do to finish off is take a dot of white and dot the outside edge there, outside corner one, and then on the opposite side two. It's not quite a circle, so I'm going to go in again, very gently. Good. So that's the eye, and that gives you that nice sort of glass effect really nice make sure you get it right but there he is so that's all the gems done this figure's really starting to stand out now as those key parts of the miniature are done and really you've made brilliant progress your metallics are done your gems are done your reds are done so all we're looking at now to finish off by the looks of it is painting the robes here and the purity seals and any bone areas like the skull and then just sorting out the black and then once you've done that, you've actually finished the figure. We've also got grey to do here. I think we're going to do that colour next. Right, so we're on the stone effect here. And it's this uh, shoulder pad that we're wanting to paint. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, we take our original colour, Dawn Stone or the old Codex Grey. And you just repaint it. You repaint the whole thing. And you're just wanting to avoid filling in the shaded areas. So I'm just going to paint there. The shading's been done for you. So you're just looking to pick out the details. Nice uh, consistency to the paint. I'm almost running my brush, just hovering it over the details here. And then one, two, three. Make sure the edge is nice and crisp and just slipping over the edge there. So you can see that detail's picked out nicely. That's your grey all picked out. I mean that looks alright as it is. But a final extreme highlight will really pick that out. So you take some grey and mix that with white not quite 50-50 depends how extreme you want to pick the highlight out but I'm mixing up here with some white enough for you to notice once it goes on and I only want to do uh, edges so I'm going to do the edge here of the stone like this and like this That's quite strong. I'm going to tone it down a bit, add a bit more grey. I'm going to add a little bit of water to make sure it's got a nice flow to it. And I want to run this edge here. That's good. And for these inside bits, just one edge, one thin edge going down to pick them out. Just the edge of that one. And here's the key part along here just the edge not the inside will do like that then down here just the edge just the edge and that creates your 
effect there and you can see how that's really lifted that out. Right, so that's the cream on the figure done. So we've picked out all the robes and all the purity seals and all the bone areas are all, all been picked out there. So that's the final effect and it's quite a difference, it's quite a shift in colour on the figure. Now I'll show you something you can do, you don't have to do this. Uh, you just take the sepia colour and if it looks stark, like a very strong shade, then you can take a bit of the sepia and just fill in a few of the cracks and it just eases off the strong shading just a little bit as I said you don't have to do this if you're really fussy then you can do it I'm not too fussed but just a little bit on there will help to break down the strength of that shading that's looking all right so I've got some white here on my palette and this is going to be an extreme highlight it's almost pure white I add a little bit of the bleach bone just to take it off white not pure white but a very light uh, shade and then just the extreme highlights which is the edges picked out and it's like you hardly notice it but it will make a difference it's the extreme edge of that robe and just a little bit picked out there that will do just the edges of the purity seals picked out just making sure my brushes are nice tip to it just the edge that's it and then the edge there it wouldn't take too long just the edge of the robes like that that just lifts the whole thing and do and then the other skull just over the top Dump. and that's about it that bit doesn't take too long but you're just adding an extreme highlight and that gives you a finished effect on the cloth there if you want to dirty it down if you want to make them look more campaigned then I would take the I would take the Agfrax earth shade and just literally stipple it on then let it dry and then stipple it on again a bit further down just to strengthen it near the bottom and that will give you that dirtying effect and you can do that same kind of effect on the feet and shin guards around the figure if you want to dirty around there if you look at the pictures then it's on there I'm keeping mine quite clean I'm not really too fast on that so I'm going to leave it and leave that there as well but if you want to dirty and add that effect then you just add the shades and washes over the top stippling it with a brush or a stabbing effect and a bit of blending and then gradually build up the layers to make it stronger so that's that done now obviously we've got to finish these purity seals and so on off people are saying how do you do the writing and I'll show you how that's done that's our next stage right I'm going to do these purity seals then now I'll show it to you on a figure already done you can see the purity seal across the top here if you use just plain black it'll look stark it'll look wrong it'll look, it'll look, it won't look very good so I'm going to show you a technique for making it look subtle and that sort of washed out kind of effect the colours you want it's like a mixture of colours I'll take the Agfrax Earth shade it's quite nice at thinning down paint but still adding pigment to it then you want some Chaos Black as well and also keep handy the bone shade because you want a pure black so you take some black and I usually add to it some of the bleached bone and that makes it a creamy kind of grey colour which is the kind of colour that you want and then I start thinning it with Agfrax Earth shade And you get a thin down 
wash. Now it's hard to get it right, so I'm going to put it on here and see how it goes. We've got a fine detail brush here. And then I just paint on just by moving the brush a little bit. That's a bit thick there. I just paint on my detail. And you can see it going on the figure there. That creates that lettering effect. And I just wiggle the brush a little bit to create sort of that handwriting kind of feel. So really just keeping a very nice clean tip to the brush with not much paint on it. And now I'm really beginning to get a nice thin effect. There's another one just here. I can see the brush is too overloaded so I'm just going to ease off. A little bit of paint. And that has done that nicely. And then a little bit here. I'm going to ease off the paint again. Keeping it thin. And just working it in the gaps. And the effects that that creates is not solid black, but like a washed out handwriting. And that's easier going on the eye. Solid black would be too overpowering on the figure. So again, just on here, I'll give it a little wiggle. The occasional gap in between so it looks like it is writing. And then and now I've got it consistency just right. And look, as it starts to run out of paint, it fades. Well, that all adds to the effect. So that's coming out really nice there. And then just going to touch a little bit in each gap, showing that the purity seal writing continues underneath. And it's looking good. I've got a bit of water because my mixture is drying out a little bit here. So it's re-watered down. Keep the paint amount thin. I don't want to overload the brush because I don't want to blob the effect. Still a bit too much. I'll take a bit off. That's looking fine. That's a nice effect. So I'll just go over all the purity seals on the figure. Now I'll finish that off. I'm just putting paint on my finger. It's just easier going. It's quite delicate work this. But it's creating the desired effect just nicely. And there we have it. Again, time consuming, but that purity seal effect really makes the mint look good. If your the strength of your paint comes out too strong, so it is too black, you're not happy with it, take the bleach bone, wash it right down, watery, and then run it over the top, and that will knock the shade down of the handwriting on the purity. So it will knock it down a tone, and then that will lighten it a bit and blend it in a bit better. That's one way of salvaging it if you make your your uh, mark your, your handwriting too strong on the figure. But now we're at the stage now, the metallics are done, the cream's done, we're happy with the outcome of that, the skulls are all done, the grey's done, the red's done. The figure is looking pretty much finished, it's just the black and then our miniature is complete. Right, last stage is the black. The first thing I do with the black is just take out the chaos black and I just run it over the, the black areas, just repairing any areas where they've got chipped and the red's starting to show through. Uh, so you know where these cables are and so on they'll just get a simple coat of black over the top and that's all fine earlier on I missed a cable that connects the shoulder pad here so I'm just going to correct that by filling it in now with black I've found that if you highlight black too much with grey then it ends up looking like grey. You want to be able to highlight it just enough so that it's highlighted and yet it still looks like black. Right then, for, for highlighting the black I take the old Codex grey add a little bit of black to it. I want to knock it down in tone so it's Codex grey with a little bit of black. Paint quite fine, not too much paint on the brush. I just hover the brush over the black area so this bit of cable 
here, just a bit of black over the top, this bit of cable, just a bit of the grey coming down, not too much, not too strong, and then the edge here just on the shoulder pad just to paint the edge in a bit of grey, and then again for these parts of the hands, I'm just using the edge of the brush and sliding it along the detail to pick it out and the actual strength of the, the sculpting will pick out the edge for me. I don't have to paint it as such, I just run the brush along the edge. Just worry I'm not doing too much grey. Because again I said if you do too much then you'll make the gra black turn into grey. So I'm just picking out the edges here with the grey and that's starting to look quite nice. And a little bit of picking out to do on the inside of the hand. A bit there. A bit there. So I'll then take pure codex grey without adding any black to it for a final extreme kind of highlight. And when we'll just add that to the very tips of a few parts just to pick them out. Just makes the highlighting look a bit sharper. Just on the tip of his thumb, tip of the power fist, and the power fist there, and that will do. And just a little bit on there. That's it, really. That's got the black done on the figure, with the still looking black, and uh, that's quite effective. That figure's finished. All I'll do to completely finish the figure. Let's take a larger brush, and where I painted the black, I'll just repaint the whole thing in black, especially the edges, seeing where the red has been worn away, and so all the edges are taken away. Now, I spotted one thing I've forgotten to do, it's easily done. So I'll just finish off here, and I'll show you what needs to be finished off on the figure and then just another coat underneath just to strengthen all that and that looks fine right, what I've forgotten to do on the figure was the plates coming up from the ground uh, I won't repaint them all in silver all I do is paint the extreme edges just like I did on the bolter on the storm bolter I'll just paint the edge, so that gives you a rusty, dirty look, but then that metallic highlighting just to finish the whole figure off.